Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Holistic Pharmacist podcast. I have with me a very special guest today, Dr. Laura Donna Shapson, who is also a pharmacist and a gut and bloating expert. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excited to share some probably alarming information about prescriptions and medicines and how it affects gut health and give your give your listeners some other avenues to repair, fix your gut. Yeah, perfect. Well, that's what we're all about here. And I'm looking forward to exploring this topic with you. It's so near and dear to my own journey and my own heart and definitely at the heart of a lot of issues, whether we realize they're connected to the gut or not, it's really uh, the connection is there. Uh, so even those people that don't have the bloating and, and the discomfort and they don't think it might be related to the gut, this is one of the first places that I personally look. So I love that we're going to get to dive into this today. But I'd love to start with just your background, a little bit about where you grew up and how you came to be a pharmacist in the first place. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up in Northeast Philadelphia um, and I oh, have always known since I was about 12 years old, since I was in high school, that I wanted to be a pharmacist. And the reason why is because I wanted to be in medical, but I didn't want to get my hands dirty. I didn't want to be a doctor. I didn't want to be a nurse. Um, I thought that if I could just get that uh, high level degree and just educate and work with people that way, that I could fulfill my desire to help people and get them to feel better. So ever since then, I was lucky enough to know from a very young age that that's what I wanted to do. So graduated um, from Temple University in 2012 with my doctor of pharmacy. And um, I would say that when I got into pharmacy school, what was really interesting was I remember being in my pharmacology and therapeutics class and we were learning about heart disease. I remember my, our teacher teaching us about clogged arteries. And after class, I went up to the teacher and I said, that's great that we have all these medicines that we can use after the fact. I said, how come we're not looking at what causes the plaque to go into the artery? Why aren't we looking at those factors and, and helping that? And she basically dismissed me. And I was like, what? You know, and from that point on, I've always kind of questioned pharmacy and medicine since I was in pharmacy school. So that was uh, kind of a part of my transition into holistic. And then I had my own problems. I had a constipation most of my life since I was a kid. I'd go maybe two or three times a week. And then in college, I had hormonal acne. And so what did my doctor do at the time? They throw you an antibiotic. And they threw me on doxycycline, which is a really broad spectrum antibiotic. And I was on it every single day for about, I think it was twice a day for about three or four months. And then shortly after that, Looking back, because at the time I didn't know, but I developed C. diff. I had extreme, extreme cramping, bloating, pain. I would have urgency to get to the bathroom. It was muddy stools. It was embarrassing. I would go anywhere from six to 10 times a day. And when I went back to my doctor, she said, oh, it's just your pharmacy school stress. You're fine. And I'm like, no, like this isn't right. She talked it up to IBS. And then I would say it just resolved itself over, I don't know, maybe like nine months after that, maybe to a year. And then I went back to being constipated. And then all of a sudden I started bloating out of nowhere and it would happen with some foods and it was very unpredictable. Um, and so it was, a no, it, this became more of a, what's going on with me? Why is this happening? I started to do my own research. I started to find two gut specialists that were going to try and help me. I went to a functional medicine doctor. But through all that, I ended up on another antibiotic. And that was, it was metronidazole. I did that for two weeks. I had done my own research in the infancy of me understanding gut health. And I put myself on a super broad spectrum herbal product. So I was tearing down my gut with an antibiotic. And then I tore it down with a bunch of herbals. And it was just kill, 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 kill. Because that's what we're taught in medical school and pharmacy school is if you got a problem, destroy it, eliminate it, get rid of it, remove it. And that's not how we do it. And so after I went through that course, I bloated the instant I woke up drinking a glass of water. I would look like I was pregnant. And with that, I'd have accompanying brain fog, irritability, fatigue, anxiety, trouble focusing, um, just completely shifted my entire life after that moment. And so I never went back to that doctor. I didn't go back to the gut specialist because she gave me a stool test, an oat test, a food sensitivity test, none of those tests helped them 
help me feel better. So like a lot of people on your podcast, right? We all do our own research. I'm very fortunate that I have the medical training that I do that I can understand clinical papers and trials and studies and really dive into those things. And so I studied and trained in how to fix the gut health. I fixed myself once I did that. I started applying everything that I've learned with a lot of my patients. And here I am, you know, six years later and I'm helping people with bloating, IBS, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, bloody stools, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis to start. But then I also touch on a lot of other factors that people have. So that's, that's the long story of how I got into this. (laughs) Yeah. Fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And, you know, I relate to so much of what you're saying because back in pharmacy school, I too would question, you know, why we isolate, you know, drugs and components of herbs and then make them into drugs, um, you know, and why we don't use whole spectrum things or whole foods for that matter. Um, You know, and and I remember there was an emphasis in my school, I went to St. John's University in New York on uh, sort of like the non-pharmacological, but because we were studying to be pharmacy experts, that sort of wasn't in our domain. So there was always like, well, you always start here, right? But then here's the pharmacy side of it, which we uh, get the honor you know, of learning. Yeah. About. Well, fun fact about that. So you mentioned lifestyle changes. Well, whenever we would write our soap notes in the PNT class, right? You remember soap notes? Yeah. Plan number one was lifestyle modifications. And number two, start this med at this dose, monitor for these side effects, check this lab work, blah, blah, blah. But we never touched on number one, lifestyle modifications, even though that was the first recommended thing. And so that's where my business name has come from. It's called Life Mod Solutions. It's a shorthand of that that drove me to go to this. What is What does that mean? <laughs> so now I do everything from nutrition to supplements, to meditation, to sleep, to a lot of energy healing modalities in my office to help people feel better. So uh, we're on the same page on that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw that you have so many certifications. So talk to us about how you went about getting those additional trainings. What is the value? If you were to do it over again, is there anything you would skip or do differently? That's a great question, actually, because I get a lot of questions from other people who wanted to get into this. What did I do? Um, I got my functional nutritional therapy training practitioner certification through Nutritional Therapy Association. I highly recommend that program. Um, It was very um, in-depth. It had a very clinical approach. I still use a lot of the tools that I've gotten from them. And then secondarily, I did something called the Primal Health Coach uh, certification, and that is through Primal Health Institute. And that's a guy, maybe most people know him. His name is Mark Sisson. He created the Primal Blueprint, and he also wrote the book Primal Endurance. And so um, he kind of led that movement of Primal. And his program was awesome too, because his touched on what the other program didn't, which was exercise physiology and how to exercise appropriately to maintain your heart rate at a certain level. So you're not always in a stress response and just shooting out cortisol all, all day long. So I really liked the the combination of both of those trainings. And then additionally, I did muscle testing training. So are you familiar with muscle testing? Yep. Kinesiology. Okay. Yeah. So applied kinesiology, uh, trained under uh, several different chiropractors to learn applied kinesiology. So now I practice a technique called morphogenic field technique in my office. And it's a wonderful thing that has been a game changer for my personal health and my patients. So I do a lot. It's basically testing the nervous system using the change of your muscle response. But um, there's good muscle testers out there and there's bad muscle testers out there. So I will be honest about that. But I have different kits in my office. And so I'm able to tell if you're sensitive to certain foods. Is your gut imbalanced with parasite, fungus, or bacteria? Is it a heavy metal or chemical? So I can get super specific. And um, we can go into why and how that works if you want. I'm not sure if your listeners are versed on what is muscle testing and how does that even work, but we can go into that if you're interested. But um, this is a game changer in my practice because I can tell what makes the body strong and what makes the body weak. Yeah, if you don't mind sharing, you know, and talking for just a few minutes about what that field is, I think we mentioned it in maybe one or two prior episodes, but um, I feel like this is more of like what people think about as the woo-woo spectrum, right? If somebody's trained in pharmacy or, or, you know, clinically oriented and evidence-based medicine, this sort of sounds like way out there. So if you could explain a little bit about the connection of the nervous system and how, how can one get good at it, right? Whether you're doing it on yourself or others. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. So muscle testing is the testing, basically the strength and weakness of your muscle by testing your energy system. So it's an, it's a basically testing your brain and why we, are we even able to do this is because we have an energy field that comes out around our body in clinical research. It's called the morphogenic field. It's also been called the bio field. And so other people will call it your aura, whatever you want to call it. It's there. We just can't see it just like we can't see the oxygen or we can't see our phones communicating with each other. This energy field exists. And so when I bring things closer to your body, um, your body's making assessment. Does this make me strong? Does this make me weak? Is this in alignment with my energy or not? And what we've really realized about the energy system of the body is that everything around us, including our body parts down to every single cell of every organ has a vibration at a specific frequency. You can measure it down to its unique decimal point. It's like your fingerprint. So we remember the sinus wave in physics. This is what this means. And so what I can do with my kits is I have the digital frequencies imprinted in, in my office on, in my kits. They look like little vials, so I can show you some of them. And water has a memory. Um, for those of you who are interested, there's a, a book out there called The Hidden Messages in Water, which can teach you about water. But we found out that water has a memory like a computer system. And so we can actually digitally imprint energy frequencies into the water. And so aluminum has a certain frequency mercury has a certain frequency bacteria has a certain frequency and obviously bacteria is mutate and change over time so i have to update those vials frequently but i can put things near your body and if it makes you weak i can say wow whenever i put a gluten by your body your your body goes wow i don't like this at all and at that same point if i put a supplement near your body with this information in your energy field, it'll tell me, does this supplement make you strong or does it make you weak? And the reality is that this is how I can individualize therapies for people. What food should they be avoiding? What supplements should they be taking? Because everybody's different and the medical system and the way that we currently approach care for patients is so cookie cutter and so one size fits all. And that's not how my body works. You are going to test for different supplements that I'm going to test for. So that's why I really like this because it gives me that individuality and I can really fine tune to each patient. So it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. And can you tell us a little bit about like what you observe around the body uh, giving you that weak response? Like what does that really look like when you have a positive or a negative response? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, usually I do the full arm extension. And so when I push on your arm, I know people's muscles are strong, so I don't have to push the arm all the way down. It's actually just that slight movement. If your arm muscle disengages immediately, that tells me that your nervous system is not firing quick enough because it's distracted by something that I'm putting in your field that it doesn't like. So it's saying, I don't care about my arm. What is this thing that you're putting near my body? And especially if I put it near their chest where their heart is or near their head where their vagus nerve is. Um, it will, it'll slightly disengage. And so for me, that's how I know that that makes them weak. Um, additionally, you know, it's not something that is a hundred percent accurate, right? There's, this is a guide tool. There's no test in the world, no blood tests, no imaging scan, nothing that's a hundred percent accurate. And I'm not claiming that this is accurate, but this helps me guide our decision using a physical response from the body. And what I, another thing that I love about what I do is when you go to the doctor, they don't touch you anymore. They don't put their hands on you. They're not feeling for things. And my whole entire procedure, I am using your arm. I'm checking your strength. I actually touch each of your organs and check the energy level of each of your organs. So I'm actually physically touching your body. So I get a lot of information just by doing that. So I love muscle testing. I think that if any of your clients or, or people out there that are listening that are interested, it's a game changer once you fully understand it. And I strongly recommend the, the morphogenic field technique. And then it's also being called biofield testing because they're, they're changing the name because it needs to fit what's in clinical research these days. But you can get training online. And I'd be happy to train anybody if you're in the Philadelphia area, come see me in my office. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Yeah, if you could, if you could recommend which uh, training that you took, uh, because you did mention in the beginning that there are good testers and there are bad testers. So my question is, you know, regarding accuracy, how can we start to replicate these results, right, and just correlate them to actually being more accurate? Um, so it sounds like the training, right, getting the good training is part of it. Any other tips? Um, I mean, I would say get trained. I mean, you can't just either you mentor with somebody who's doing this, who can explain it. And then you also have to practice it a lot. Muscle testing is a feel. So you have to be able to feel the change in the muscle. So I would just say you have to be really good at, at practicing with somebody. So, uh, but that's what I would recommend there. 
I love it. Well, talk to us about how you built up your practice. How did you start seeing clients? You know, this is one of those things where people, a lot of times they have ideas, they want to do something differently. They want to start consulting, but they really just hide behind getting more and more and more certifications. So when did you say like, okay, I have enough under my belt. I'm going to start seeing people. And then maybe, uh, you, you start adding things as you're seeing people, like for example, your muscle testing, I'm sure that wasn't the first thing you did, right? So mm-hmm. when um, did you start seeing people? When did you start adding in the muscle testing or your other, I know you're doing energy work and Reiki. So like, how did those things come online? Yeah, so I finished my NTA training, uh, my primal health coaching cert first, and then I did my NTA training next. After I had the nutrition background and understanding of the body, and nutrients and supplements and all of that. Then I started, I did um, about three trainings in muscle testing. And right from there, I felt confident enough to start. Actually, to be honest, I didn't feel comfortable doing muscle testing at the start. It's just one of those things where I was like, you know what? I just have to do it. The more I practice it, I know my intuition will kick in, the feeling will kick in, and I'll understand it. So at the time, I was a pharmacy manager um, in a retail pharmacy location. So I did that 40 hours a week. And then my two days off that I had each week, I would see patients out of my home. So I converted my guest bedroom into an office and I just started working with family and friends. And those are the people that tend to trust you at first because they're your family and your friends. And so, um, I started bringing in some of my coworkers, family and friends, and then all of a sudden they started to get better. And that's really what gave me the confidence to say like, wow, like this is really working. I'm really making a difference. Referrals started to come in. And it got to the point where I started to run out of slots to see patients at home. And I said, okay, universe, you're telling me that I need to start going into this holistic path that I've been always wanting to get into. And I'm getting busy. I can't keep working 60 to 70 hours a week between both jobs. And so I I decided to take the leap and, and leave my job as a pharmacist and just do this wholeheartedly and continue through it. So, and now I am booked out like three or four weeks at this point. So it's, it's a good problem to have, but my business is thriving and it really just means you're never going to feel ready to be honest. But I think if you have a training or two under your belt, you just need to start. And what's going to end up happening is you may have a patient that comes in with something that you don't know exactly how to help them in that moment. And that's okay. You're not supposed to know everything. We're not designed to do that, but you can say, Hey, I'm not really sure. Let me look into this and I'll get back to you. And that's what makes you a better practitioner in the long run because your, t- your patients are going to teach you more than you could ever teach yourself. And that's what I've learned is every patient that walks through my door, I learn something new about how to be a better coach, how to be a better motivator, how to help them with some of the issues that they're running into, and then how to support different conditions. So, and then my patients will come in. Have you ever heard of this supplement? Have you heard of this herb? I go, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Let me look it up. <laughs> so you just keep your, I'm a student for life. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great point and really great advice there. Now, how did you start to build those long-term relationships? And for those people that, you know, have very complex issues, did you take those on or did you sort of refer out? How did you handle that? No, I mean, with my pharmacy background and then the two trainings that I got, I felt really confident handling a lot of the issues that I had. And I think that that came from the muscle testing because the muscle testing doesn't lie. If you know how to read the body in that way, you know what makes the body weak and what makes the body strong. And then visit after visit, what I noticed is what my patients would continually get better and better and better. And there's always some hiccups. Sometimes people get a little worse and they get a little better. But I would say 90% of my patients always just keep getting better and better and better. And that is what gave me the confidence to continue from that. And so, um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought here. Where, where, Where did we start here? Oh, so how do do you handle complex uh, patients? And also, um, do you tend to build long term relationships and see the same patient, um, you know, over a period of time? Yeah, so complex patients, I do see. And what I've learned in my trainings and my muscle testing is most disease is caused by nutrient deficiency. So if you just start there, you're going to see a ton of healing because the body knows how to heal. So no matter what the condition is, as long as you help the digestive system break down nutrients, you give it like a nice, good whole food based multivitamin, help the body sleep a little bit with some minerals, which is really calming to the body. Just by doing that in three or four weeks, I start all my patients on some basic stuff that way. And they automatically start to see shifts in their energy and their mood and irritability and bathroom habits just by doing that. 
And so once you kind of start that platform, now you've built them up, you've got them stronger, and now they're ready to continue that healing journey. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And not only are we what we eat, right, going back to like the gut health, but also what we absorb. So we have to sort of understand that, yes, we can feed the body good things, but we also have to make sure it's getting into the cells and getting into the blood and, you know, getting to where it's supposed to go. So, um, you know, what, what you're saying about your own journey, right? And I, I read about your bio with, you know, your detoxification also is a part of it as well, because there could be toxins lurking there and, or even drugs, right, that are competing for these nutrients and and using up nutrients even more. So you need to replenish them even more so in that way. So um, I, I also heard you mention about, you know, the functional medicine testing, right, it can get expensive, it could get overwhelming, and it still could get you to, you know, no relief or little relief. So um, I'm curious if you use any of the testing besides the muscle testing in your practice and what you've noticed with that. Yeah. So I would say the, I don't run testing on any of my patients when I start, start to work with them. And the reason is because of the people that end up in my office are the ones that show up with a stack of lab work, imaging scans, MRIs, colonoscopy, endoscopy, capsule study, you name it. They come into me and they go, everything came back normal, but I still feel like crap, you know? And so I tend to have a different approach because of that. I feel like it's a trauma they go through. They have all this hope that something's going to turn up and it doesn't. I tend to approach patients by looking at the patient. I focus on them and their symptoms. Uh, I think that our society and what the medical system has, has done to us is we're all focused on objective stuff, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, but the numbers always don't mean that just because your numbers look good doesn't mean you feel good. So um, I don't order any tests. I would say I have in the past, the only test that I really, really like and I like to order is the urinary oat test, which is the organic acids test. And I really like that one because of the uh, first, I think it's like first 15 markers, but especially the first nine that tell me about yeast and candida and mold. That's a really phenomenal test. And Um, You know, my muscle testing will tell me about yeast and candida, but I have some patients that just want to know for sure. And that's the one that I'll run because that also gives us some indicators of bacteria as well. Um, I like stool tests, but not really because, you know, I follow a functional medicine doctor, um, doctor, I think it's Dr. Michael Ruscio. He actually did a stool sample with using the same stool that came out and he sent each specimen to the two different GI stool laboratories. And when he got the results back, b- both of them were completely different. And, and when we understand that lab work is interesting because when they get their reference ranges, they're using their own population of people who are taking that test. So the lab range for lab corp could be different than the lab range for quest diagnostics. And it's because of the pool of the data. And another thing is that they're also pooling all that data together from all these sick people. So if you pull, and I I love doing this, pull your lab work back from the early 2000s, 15, 20 years ago, and look at your TSH number, and you're going to see the reference range used to be 0.5 to 2. And now if you pull a lab test from this time, you're going to see that the reference range goes all the way up to four to four and a half. And that's not, that's not optimal. If a doctor sees that you're four, they're like, oh yeah, you're fine. But in functional medicine, as you know, we like to be optimal, which is closer to one, right? So it's interesting to see that each lab has their own goal values. And so it can skew your results. So that's what has really pushed me away from relying on stool tests and all of that. And rather I just go to the basics. I understand that the body needs good microbes and I understand that symptoms tell me more than anything. And from that, I, I will then maybe a couple months down the road, I'll run a test if we think we still need it. But to be honest, I really, in the six years I've been doing this, I ran five O tests and maybe one food sensitivity test. Yeah, I tend to be the same way where I try to meet the foundations first, because I know that's what is needed. And sometimes it's really about the patient preference that really makes me order the test if if they really want to see, like you said, if that's going to motivate them, if they want to see the black and white results. But like you said, you know, that accuracy of it really depends on the sensitivity and the specificity of any given test. So you know, we're not getting 100% accuracy because the body symptom wise will tell us, right? Um, Okay, so there's still something here we need to look at. 
if you're still experiencing specific symptoms, whereas the numbers, like you said, they're relative to the person that is experiencing the numbers. So if they're normal for one person, doesn't mean it's going to be exactly, you know, the proportion that another person needs for their normal, because everybody, you know, is, is operating slightly differently. And it's impossible to know what is like optimal for every single individual, unless we factor in what they're presenting the symptoms and, and how they feel and all of that. So um, I love that approach. So I, I would love to get into, you know, why specifically you focus on the gut and how does that show up in your complex patients. So if you could tell us a little bit about the one-on-one -on -one people that you see and what your process is with them. And then I also know that you have an online program that you run focusing on bloating. So can you tell us about those two things? Yeah. So one thing, you know, when I, when I first started my practice, people would come to me for all sorts of issues. It was blood sugar. It was autoimmune conditions, pain, everything. And I was just starting to target specifically for those conditions. And then what I actually started to notice was that there was always a digestive issue with everybody, whether it was a little acid reflux, whether it was bloating or extreme bloating or constipation or diarrhea, there was always something GI related. And so knowing my history of GI stuff and how it affected my mood and focus and memory and sleep, I started to realize, wow, I think I need to start shifting and just start everybody off with gut. And I did that. I started doing that about three years ago where I said, I'm just going to start everybody off with gut stuff and foundations. And that is when all of a sudden I didn't have to chase after those other things. Their pain started to go away. Hormones regulated, periods got more comfortable for women, headaches went away, sleeping was better, energy was better. They were motivated to go to the gym again. It was just these whole slew of things have started to get better. And as I dove more into the research, what we find, and there is a ton of clinical research on the use of probiotics in medical conditions. We have amazing evidence to show that IBS symptoms, which is your bloating, gas, constipation, abdominal pain, and diarrhea, um, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and gut infections like candida and yeast and parasites. Um, we also have things like depression and anxiety get better with use of probiotics. We see respiratory infections get better, UTIs. Um, also in the hormonal health, we see endometriosis improve, thyroid health, PCOS gets better. And then get this, uh, there was a three month study that was done on blood work and they looked at, do, do can we help insulin resistance with probiotics? And the answer is yes. Insulin resistance got better. Blood sugars got better. A1C, um, cholesterol got better. Inflammatory markers went down. Blood pressure gets better just by using probiotics. And these are probiotics versus placebo. So they were very good uh, randomized placebo controlled trials to show this data. So this told me, wow, I need to keep doing the gut health stuff because look at all of the things that we can impact. You know, autoimmune conditions get better like MS and also rheumatoid arthritis. So that was what really drove me to the gut health factor. And so I realized that that needs to be corrected first before we can really touch and get specific on their other issues. Cause half the time it just gets better on their own anyway. Once I fix the gut, once we fix the gut and I know that you're pooping every day and you're, if you're feeling great and you're, you're absorbing your food properly, you're getting stronger. Then we start talking about detoxifying. Okay. Because a lot of the issues that we have are also it's nutrient deficiency plus toxicity. If we look back at our history since world war II, there, which was the chemical revolution, there have been over 100,000 different chemicals brought to market that are man-made. And it's something that we have never been exposed to before. So we are burning through our nutrients so much faster because we have to detoxify all of these exposures every day. And on top of the emotional stress and the lack of sleep and the poor food quality that we have out there, we're so nutrient deficient because of that, these stresses that we're adding in. So once I fix the gut, then we go into detoxifying and detoxifying starts with stop exposing yourself with toxins. So I'll start to teach people about their personal care products like toothpaste and you know perfumes and makeups and all those other things that have you know a lot of chemicals in them. And then I'll take them through a structured detox program uh, to help them eliminate what's been stored in their tissues and their fat. I love it. So on average, how long does this whole process take, give or take? Yeah. So um, I have uh, my patients with gut health. If you were to do it with just food alone, it could take up to two years, okay? And this is research by the GAPS diet. 
um, which is the gut and psychology syndrome diet. You're familiar with Dr. Natasha. Yeah. So that was a diet that I tried to follow in the beginning and I wasn't, it was great. It worked, but it just, it was really restrictive and it took a really long time. I have now found this little secret sauce recipe of getting people's guts fixed, corrected, and them eating any food that they want within about three or four months, which is very quick uh, in comparison to the two year. So um, I love that I can get people back to enjoying their life and not to say that they should go back to eating the way that they were, but now they can have their treats and their cheats and just enjoy life without feeling like they're going to stumble over in chronic pain the next day because their guts acting up and all the other stuff starts to act up. So I love building the reserves for people. So for the, for the gut stuff, it's about three or four months. And then as we detoxify again, it's another about three or four months. Um, and so that is, that's because a lot of the cleanses that are out there, they're three day stool cleanses. They're one week cleanses. That's really just detoxifying the bowel, which is great but it's not necessarily tapping into the cellular level and the tissues and your brain. And so you need to be on a structured three, three month and sometimes up to five months of a structured detoxification program to help you effectively eliminate and also use binders to catch all this, tra all that trash that comes out. That has been, um, I will say this, I have a couple of rheumatoid arthritis patients and um, some other pain conditions the going through this whole program, the gut stuff and the detoxification, but it's specifically the detoxification has been huge in reducing um, pain and discomfort and whole body inflammation for sure. I love it. Yeah. And you're absolutely right where the heroic medicine, right? That's like, hey, treat this. And you mentioned this before too, like treating the disease as the enemy, right? And waging war on cancer and on antibi and on bacteria and like X, Y, Z. Uh, but the reality is we really need to bring that holistic lens and the harmony and allow the body to do what it's do doing and do what it has been doing. It's great at keeping you alive and it has its own feedback mechanisms that heal the body. So if you arm the body with the nutrients and the proper detoxification pathways, it's like the the best support that you can give it to remodel and do, do what it needs to do and go into the areas that it needs to go into and deal with the issues um, at the root cause level. So I love your approach. And uh, if you want to talk about your online gut course that I, I, I mentioned, um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you set that up and what inspired that. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for three years and I just started to see some continual patterns of muscle testing of what most patients started to test for and what really helped resolve some of their issues. So I would say that my program will handle probably 80 to 85 percent of your general gut issues that you currently have. So um, in this program, you get three supplements at the start. It's included in the price, but it's basically a two week training. And I'm actually going to teach you about what's happening to your gut. How did you get here? Um, what should you be avoiding when it comes to foods and what should you be eating instead? And then I provide you a bunch of recipes. And then I tell you from that point on how long you should be on it. Now, while it is a two week course, it's actually a introductory to your gut health program. And then I actually lay out the next six months for you on what you should do on your own. And because I think that I, I wanted to make it a longer program, but it seems daunting. So I'm, I'm going to, so here's what I did. Take this information, see if you can do it on your own. And then if you need me, you can call me and we can schedule an appointment each month as you work through the rest of it. And I can help guide you along the rest of the way, but it's basically everything that you need to know to fix your gut. And it's going to save you up to $2,000. Uh, Cause if you go to a functional medicine doctor, they're going to order all those lab tests because unfortunately that's just their mantra of thinking and training is to still go with testing and numbers and, and evaluations, which I think there can be some about value in that. But, you know, even when you think of the, the functional medicine doctor fee, it's anywhere from $400 an hour to $600 an hour for each visit, um, plus all the testing and then all the supplements that they're going to put you on. So I try to do the bare minimum, try to make it as cost effective as possible, give you all the information that you need to know to take power into your hands. And then you'll also have direct access to me as you go through the program. So you can easily message me and I will always answer within 24 hours. And then I also have a private Facebook group for everybody who goes through the program. So everybody kind of shares and um, you know works together with information and helps each other out, which when we're going through health stuff, we need a community. We want to be able to feel heard and have other people understand what we're going through. So um, I love providing that space for my community to kind of connect and help each other. So um, that's my gut program. So it helps all symptoms of IBS and bloating and, and, and even more. 
And some people are going to say, do I really have a gut problem? I don't know. People say, do I have leaky gut syndrome? And I want to say, put your finger on your pulse. If you have a pulse, you probably have leaky gut syndrome, <laughs> you know, because unfortunately it is rampant in our society. <laughs> Yeah, well, Dr. Loredana, thank you so much for sharing all those clinical pearls with us. And for the audience that may be wondering, well, how did you make this business model sustainable, right? Keeping with your values, it sounds like of keeping costs down, right? And also being able to leave your full-time retail position. How did you manage to, to transition fully and to make your practice sustainable? Yeah, it was scary in the beginning. You know, what do I charge? What's my worth? What's my value? It was hard to find out. And then um, as I saw patients get better and better, I started to, you know, increase my price for my one on ones. But now I started to really um, shift into doing things on online programs. I realized I was repeating a lot of the same stuff that could be applied to a lot of people. And so now I have a YouTube channel which shares that information. And now I'm doing this program which people can purchase. So this is like a form of passive income, right? So I realized that most of my job is one-on-one. -on -one. It's either virtual or in person. And so that can get taxing. If I'm not working, I'm not making you know, a living. And again, as I want to help people, I still have to make a living to afford my life and enjoy. So um, I think that now I've started to transition to more of this passive income approach so that I can marry the two and then I can still have my work-life balance. So it takes consistency, trusting in yourself, knowing that you're worth it, knowing that your training and education is so unique and different than what's out there. And to know that holistic health is what people want. I think that the whole pandemic has really taught us all that we need to be advocates for our own health. So people are seeking this information and they're curious and they want to be advocates for their own health. So there is no better career right now than being in the holistic world and being a health coach and supporting people. And you're going to know how good you are at it until you try it and you start to see your patients get better. And it's and it just kind of rolls and, and goes from there. And the referrals are just going to keep coming in as you help people get better because people like to share and they talk. I love that. Well, congratulations again on all your success. And uh, thank you for your wisdom. Now, if you have just one more minute le left, I would love to invite you to a rapid fire round. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so question number one, I always ask this to everybody, what's the number one thing somebody can do right now to improve their quality of life? Ooh, okay, go back to Whole Foods get rid of things that are made from white flour and sugar and in boxes, packages and bags, because there's just way too many chemicals. And, you know, I, I often tell people to avoid gluten and, you know, gluten is a culprit for a lot of gut stuff and some other issues. But when you avoid the gluten, you just automatically avoid all the other crap because gluten is often paired with chemicals and food coloring and sugar and all of that stuff. So that is my number one tip is go to a paleo diet, which is a paleolithic diet, right? Eating around the outside of the grocery store. Just by doing that, you're going to see huge shifts in your health in a matter of three weeks. And if you've never done it, I just challenge all of your listeners to try it. I love it. Well, thank you. That was a huge tip. Uh, number two, which is sort of the flip side of that, what makes you really angry or what's something that you wish you didn't see in life or in this world? The food supply. I think the, the, the damage that the politics and insurance companies and pesticide companies on agriculture has done to us. I think the society sets us up to fail. And I see it day in and day out in my office, my patients, once I start teaching them about food and what to look for, they go, Oh my God, when I go out to eat, I don't, I don't know what to get. Everything has crap in it. And I go, I'm glad you're seeing this, that it's not our fault that we're sick. We're set up for failure everywhere we go because they don't understand what good food quality is. All they're worried about is filling their pockets and selling food. So they know that sugar is addictive and they know that that triggers people to continue to buy. They make foods extremely hyper palatable and really tasty and melt in your mouth that we want to go and reach for those foods before we reach for the vegetables and the whole foods. So if we just fix our food supply and got rid of, you know, chemicals and junk and all of that and, and, and really got rid of pesticides and herbicides we would be a lot better off. So I'm very passionate about food supply and all of that. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with everything you're saying. And yeah. it's really like the shelf life and the industry standards and the lobbying and really it's not our health, right? That's the priority. And that's really sad. And it's up to us 
to take a stand and to make those choices for ourselves and our family and educate ourselves. Yeah. And we vote with our dollars that when, when it comes to this type of change, it comes from the people. And, you know, if you look around, when you go to a restaurant now, there's gluten-free options, there's vegan options, right? When you go to the grocery store now, you're seeing more organic, you're seeing a lot of these things. And it's because the the manufacturers are seeing that this is what people are buying now. And so we need to vote with our dollars. And the more that you buy these foods, people say, oh my God, it's so expensive. And I get it. I mean, food costs have gone up. But if you really compare it and you stop buying some of those packaged foods and products and all of that, those are marked up 30 to 40 percent more than what it would cost you if you just made that same thing at home on your own. And so you'll actually find that by getting rid of some of those chemicals and craps and, you know, fancy drinks and your fancy coffees when you go to your, you know, designer coffee places, you're going to save so much money. Um, and then you're going to it really isn't that bad when you when you really look at it that way. Yeah, absolutely. So Dr. Loredana, what's your, um, what's like a fun fact about you? Ooh, what's a fun fact about me? Um, let's see, I guess I'm a first generation Italian American. My parents are from Italy. So I feel like I grew up a little bit differently in this world where, um, I have this different mantra of, of, of life and enjoying food very much and eating for three hours and all of that. So I think I have a, a appreciation for food that really brought me into this career. So <laughs> yeah, <love> being Italian American. <laughs> Yeah, the food culture. I love that. So thank you so much for again, being on the show. And please tell our audience where they can learn more from you and about you and get in touch with you. Yeah. So my website is lifemodsolutions.com. And I'm on YouTube and TikTok, Instagram, Facebook at Life Mod Solutions. And then check out my website. Um, you can, add, if you're suffering from bloating or IBS symptoms or acid reflux, I have a tea recipe that you can make at home using things you have in your kitchen. It's completely free. Check it out and start doing that because you're going to feel a shift as soon as you start doing that in the first couple of days. So visit my website to learn more. All right. Awesome. I'll share all that in the show notes. And thanks again. It was my pleasure to have you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.